Okay, up to Noops Nation. Uh, my name is Reed Nelson. I'm here with Jason Briggs. Uh, we're going to do the Bloomington South Week 7 predictions, I believe. Uh, we'll start out with the number 8 seeded Squires or the number 8 ranked Squires versus the number 7 ranked St. Ball. How do you see this game turning out? Uh, well, actually, battle up two pretty good teams. I believe both either 3 and 1 or 4 and 1. St. Ball just coming off a pretty big win uh, against the Blue Horns last week. Squires. Uh, I don't know if they've had a good win since Big Smash, but at least, I mean, they're pretty pretty solid team, good resume, uh, basically an improved noisy withdrawal. Uh, how the game stacks up will probably be based on who shows up for St. Paul. Um, I, I guess regardless if Kloby is there or not, I like them on the inside. Um, but if they don't have a full roster, uh, the substitutions can get a little off, and that may give the Squires an advantage. Uh, as far as the Squires are concerned, Martanzik needs to hit threes. Uh, him, Mead, Hamill, uh, they're going to get a lot of them if, if Ben especially can hit since his range is pretty much anywhere past half court. I, I think the Squires have a shot to stay in the game, but unfortunately I just think the Garland, J. Sam, Kloby front line will be too much, so I'm going to go St. Paul by eight. Okay, Bad Boys three, taking on the Broncos. Uh, Broncos' big weakness has always been their guard play. Well, this year they added Murdoch and Bowman uh, to give uh, Robert Brayton a, a little help bringing the ball up. Uh, not only that, but, but Bowman and Murdoch can score as well. The Bad Boys 3, uh, their biggest weakness is the guard play. Um, they have Larencott and that's it. I mean, they're, they're trying to force Hawkins to have to bring the ball up. That's not his forte. Uh, and then Little Helmy, uh, Omer Helmy, it, it, he's not a playmaker for other people than himself. So uh, with the improved guard play of the Broncos, I think that totally is going to wipe out any size advantage the Bad Boys 3 may have. Um, so I'm going to go Broncos by 15. Okay, uh, number five seeded Big Smash will take on uh, the Sox numbers who actually lost here tonight to the Donkeys, believe it or not. Uh, who do you have in this game? Um, despite the fact that, and I'm, tr I'm drawing a huge blank there, the, the big man. Uh, for the sock numbers is back and not Rablin, not Iker, but I can see his face. Right, I can see his face as well. And he, he's a beefcake, let's be honest. He's he's ripped, he's he's their workhorse. Um, and RJ Shea is also a really feisty player, but I, other than that, I think that's pretty much where the toughness ends with the sock numbers. We're big smash up and down the lineup there. Uh, with the exception of you probably, they're a bunch of bullies. And I think the physicality that they bring, even if Shooting might not be one of their strong suits, at least at a few positions. Uh, the physicality they bring and the defensive toughness is going to be too much for the sock thumpers. So, so I'm going to go big smash by 12. Okay, old school rivalry here, Rebels. Who shows up? And who is left from Vegas that's not hurt? Those are the, the two questions I would have for you. If it burns there and it's the old cliche and I hate it, it's going to be a different game. Um, that being said, I think the taunts that Izzy has thrown at the Rebels for going on six seasons now uh, is starting to get to him, and they're going to want to shut him up by not finishing 3-5 and five this year. And looking at their schedule, I believe they have the Bulls and St. Ball left, uh, meaning the T-Pups is probably their best chance of getting that third win. I think they can win all game, all their games, let's, let's be honest. But their easiest game might be against the T-Pups. They're a little old. Um, but burn, really, burn and ball are great offensive weapons, but I, I mean, I just don't know if if they've got enough anymore to be able to carry that team. But if they throw a mean two-three zone, which I know they can do, which has got them far in the playoffs, it, it could be a different game. But um, I'm going to say the Rebels, due to some intensity and 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 increased turnovers by the T Pups, uh, will we'll lead to a Rebels. Okay, uh, ten seed of Blue Horns versus the Lakers. Oh, piece of cake. Uh, Blue Horns by 10 in this one. Uh, Noe Mendez, just not, that old gray marriage just ain't what she used to be. Uh, sorry, Noe. Sounds good. I like it. I like it. Uh, Timber Puppies, uh, second night, of the, uh, second game of the night. Jemima. <laughs> They'd have to be on their sixth night to lose to that squad. I'll keep it short and sweet. Keep ups by 11. We'll, we'll stay close just because we're going to be a little tired. They are old. Okay, Durant Jemima then plays another back-to-back. -back. We've got some scheduling quirks here uh, against the Red Devils team who lost badly to the Muskies last week. Do the Red Devils get back on track? Honestly, I would have picked Durant Jemima based on their, their tough game against St. Ball and the Riddlers. They, they were in both those games. Uh, and the fact that Red 
Devils are so terrible at offense, but the fact that they're on a back-to-back, -back, they're going to be tired, and I think that speed advantage and offensive advantage they would have is kind of thrown out the window. So Red Devils, uh, they are one ugly team to watch, and it must be that John Hohenstein is their good luck charm. Uh, he's not playing this season in favor of drinking, or it's softball he calls it, but it, we know what it is. Um, but even without John, it's it's going to be uh, probably a 15-point Red Devils victory. And I, I would say like 53-38, something just ridiculously low scoring. Okay, last game of the night, big one. 12-seeded um, Bulls, 6-seeded Showtime. Showtime is a very smart team. Um, I just don't think they're smart enough to be able to stop both Rod and Marcus Marshall. Uh, the one benefit they have going into this game is they've all played together. Where the Bulls, is, without Romero and, I mean, being hurt, they're kind of being thrown together on the fly. So the, the chemistry issue may come up and may tip in, in Showtime's favor, but just the dynamic players on the Bulls roster, even without Romero and Rod on one leg, it, it might be too much for them to take. Um, for some reason, though, I, I, I really want to see how Rod plays tonight. It, it's gonna, it would definitely sway my decision, but just considering that Rod may play, I'd have to give the Bulls a, a six-point win. Thank you, sir. Appreciate your time.